Welcome everybody. My great pleasure to introduce today's speaker. We have a pleasure to, uh, to host online Marcin Mubeiko from University of Gdańsk. So Marcin is a specializes in quantum foundations and quantum thermodynamics and open quantum systems. He did his PhD, I believe, in the in University of Śląs Yes, Stylizia. Yeah. Stylizia yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, the University and then moved I guess as a Sonatina fellow to University of Gdańsk. And okay, now I'm not sure about your status. You are probably a postdoc. In yes, Gdańsk. I am the postdoc. Mm -hmm. uh, working with Michał, well, that's okay. Or someplace nice if you see apologies. So what I wanted to say is I haven't interacted scientifically that much with Marcin, but uh, he's definitely a, a deep thinker and uh, kind of has this far approach to doing science. So uh, rather maybe than kind of producing zillions of papers, like he, uh, he kind of thinks thoroughly about uh, some topics and often it pays off. So Martin last year uh, published single auto nature communications paper, very impressive on quantum thermodynamics. Congratulations. Thank yes, you. today. Today he will be talking uh, about uh, well, like whether one can reconcile uh, usual approaches to open quantum systems dynamics with thermodynamics or equilibration postulates. So the uh, screen is yours. Great to have you, Martin. Okay, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Thank you for this uh, kind uh, introduction, and uh, also thank you for this inv invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to share my research with you. So as, as Michał said, I started my postdoc uh, at the University of Gdańsk and I um, was working on quantum thermodynamics in this approach of uh, resource theories. And now I, I, I was involved in, in the project of open uh, quantum systems. So it is a, rather, a little bit different approach. Uh, maybe less general from the mathem mathematical perspective, but for sure more realistic, and and that's why this is this is very interesting. So today' topics and yes, of course, here are my collaborators. So uh, this is uh, the joint work. Uh, in all of them are from the ICTQ team center. So uh, the, the today topic is about uh, some deep problem uh, in in the description of open systems, and we try to solve this problem. And this is uh, uh, the problem to uh, reconcile uh, completely positive dynamics. And you know probably that it is very essential for uh, for arbitrary quantum uh, mechanical evolution and with equilibration postulate. Uh, so this is another uh, very um, universal and very common process in physics, uh, just uh, thermalization. So, so this is very, uh, very deep problem uh, as you see. So m one may thought that equilibration is so universal and so common in physics, may probably it's, it's the most uh, well-known process in physics, so, so so this problem should be solved a long time ago, but the reality is, is different. So let me start with some general description of, of open systems. Uh, so first, uh, we imagine that that open system is a kind of a system, small system, which interacts with a huge environment. So uh, here we have a red circle and, and the, the small one and the big one. Uh, and uh, so we can think that initially uh, our system is isolated from this environment. This environment is already in equilibrium. So we describe this, this whole thing um, as a Gibbs state. So uh, this is the proper uh, thermal state. Uh, so we imagine that uh, that initially those two are separated. Uh, the the uh, system is isolated from the environment, and after long time, uh, this is the thermalization process. And after long time, if we first we we turn on some interaction. So uh, first, this is uh, initial Hamiltonian uh, 
just free Hamiltonian of the system and free Hamiltonian of the buff, uh, then we, we turn on interaction. This is uh, some general interaction term with, with constant coupling lambda. And then we, we uh, wait uh, after all of this thermalizes. So after long, in the long time limit, uh, now at the end we have uh, the, the green circle becomes a red circle. So, so now it's a part of, of, the, of the whole environment. In fact, now it should be indistinguishable uh, from the environment. So this is the, the schematic idea of, of the thermalization process. Uh, in a minute, I will tell you what are the problems with that and, and what are the assumptions. Uh, but first, maybe a few words about the motivation of open systems. Uh, you are working uh, on uh, quantum computers. And uh, for example, in this case, um, the open system description is very crucial also because uh, you probably very you probably know very well that uh, the main problem of a quantum computer is a decoherence. So it's a part of, of this thermalization process. However, decoherence is, is much faster than, than this uh, uh, final thermal state. So uh, this is, uh, but it's not only about quantum computers. The, uh, every system in, in, in this reality, in fact, interacts with the environment. So, so this is uh, rather a fundamental uh, feature. And uh, uh, so let me explain what are the approximations uh, in this description. Because first, uh, this is the idea that uh, we start in the uncorrelated state. So, so we assume that initially we have a, a product form of the system and the environment. However, uh, as I said, every system interacts with the environment. So, so there is no reason why in some particular time t, these two are uncorrelated because this interaction is, is always uh, present. So, so this is unreasonable from, from, from this perspective. Another, another issue is that uh, we think that we can uh, describe our system by some bare Hamiltonian, by some free Hamiltonian. And this is another problem because uh, we think, uh, because this is an ideal object. Uh, this, is, this should be the Hamiltonian of the system if it's totally isolated from the environment. But as I said, once again, uh, this is not true. Normally, uh, this interaction is always present. So uh, maybe it's, it's not possible to, to empirically, uh, for example, uh, measure such a, such a quantity. And you will see in, in, in this whole uh, talk that, in fact, we have a different uh, meanings of Hamiltonian. So, so we can uh, look at, the, uh, 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 at this concept from different perspectives. And this is like a renormalization theory, such that, for example, we, we change the bare Hamiltonian into something else because of the interaction. And uh, in this whole talk, we will see that there are three different propositions of, uh, for such a renormalization. And which one is correct, I, I will try to explain. But um, now we can, we, we, we can look at the first one. And the first one comes from the static perspective. So let us forget about this whole dynamics, which, uh, uh, which uh, evolve our system to equilibrium. But uh, let's for a while assume that, that, we, are, uh, that we are in equilibrium. So this is the static picture. We forget about the intermediate dynamics, but only uh, we look at the final state. So everything is in equilibrium. So uh, we can write the total Hamiltonian. And now the idea is to trace out the buff. And, uh, and then uh, after this, this uh, tracing degrees of freedom of the environment, now we have a density matrix which describes our system. But indeed, this is the, the density matrix which describes the proper equilibrium. 
So the big mistake, which is very often uh, uh, taken, is that uh, that we assume that that thermalization. So so, so let's uh, let's assume that I have some dynamics, some CPTP map for for our system, and uh, and I want to describe thermalization. So very often it is assumed that the final state of of, of my process process is the Gibbs state according to this bare Hamiltonian. So finally, I, I should have some exponential of the minus beta H0. And this is the, the final Gibbs state. But this is the mistake, even in the weak coupling, because I should also mention uh, uh, this, that, uh, that uh, we uh, are working here in the weak coupling limit such that this this lambda constant is is uh, is much smaller than one, and then we can expand our our quantities in in in, in this parameter. Um, and on, so much. You can yes. I interrupt you for a second. Yes, of course. So uh, okay, I have actually two maybe somehow on high level connected questions, but okay, one uh, okay, I mean or comment. So one comment is. Uh, I mean, of, of course, like, okay, I, I agree with you that like when you have interactions and you trace the path, uh, it's not uh, God given that you, okay, it's not probably even true that you end up in the Gibbs state corresponding to the Hamiltonian of, of the system, yep. but, uh, you know, it's all then a matter of like how well you, one can rephrase this question and ask, okay, how well you can approximate the uh, the Gibbs state, right? Uh, mm -hmm. In some conditions, and I know, I mean, I'm not an expert on this, but there were some works. Uh, I think the uh, by people from ICFO actually, like locality of temperature, this kind of works that they kind of started in lattice. That was in lattice systems, like some uh, you know local interactions on a lattice, okay. and then in some conditions you can you can do it, right? That's uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, this is this is the matter uh, about the um, uh, what kind of uh, approximation you you want to uh, obtain. Yes, because this is uh, uh, here. For example, we we uh, calculate everything in the weak coupling in, in the weak coupling limit. So, uh, so finally. Uh, I will uh, show you that there are some corrections to this bare Hamiltonian, but they are still uh, of the order of lambda square. So, so this is a little addition, but it is present. Sure, but the question is, no, I, I understand. Okay, I understand. I just wanted to maybe give up, but so, uh, okay. In the end of the day, the question would be like, okay, I, I guess in that paper, they, they they give bounds in trace distance, for example. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Which is, uh, I mean, for some applications can be sort of enough, right? Yes, of uh, course. Yes. So, yes, okay. I agree. Okay, a second, okay, second question or comment, if I may. <laughs> so, yes, of course. It's, it's more like, because I'm totally, uh, like, I, I used to be interested in this thermodynamics, not that much anymore, but, okay, on a high level, I, uh, uh, what I remember from from university. Okay, so when 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 we let's say in undergrad uh, on undergrad level derives uh, ensembles uh, statistical yes. ensembles in in uh, statistical thermodynamics. Uh, you no, know, we we really kind of write let's say those Gibbs uh, Gibbs states, uh, microcanonical or microcanonical ensembles stuff like yes. that. Yes, but. Let's say you mentioned quantum computers in, in passing, right? So uh, when we learn about those objects, they are supposed okay. They are maybe presented sometimes in quant uh, in quantum mechanical lingo, but they concer concern macroscopic systems, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And also, uh, kind of implicitly, you don't probe, I guess, against all possible observables that you have in your systems. Yes, uh, but you uh, uh, you are concerned with microscopic quantities, mm -hmm. and then everything seems to kind of beautifully work. I mean, work, works great. Okay. Uh, my question is like, to what extent even this description via Gibbs states uh, makes sense if we really have 
you know, if we are in the regime of quantum computers, uh, when, when you are supposed to have quite precise control over, you know, what quantum states uh, you have and what observables you are really measuring, right? So that's, yeah. I mean, yes, maybe, yes. Mm -hmm. I think that 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 if you have a qubit in in a quantum computer, for example, it it is not in full equilibrium. Yes, this is you can think that that the um, uh, let's uh, let's think about the superconducting qubits and um, the in equilibrium is is the lattice. Yes, that that you have some phonons uh, phonon interaction with with this uh, Cooper pairs, for example. And, and and this is the the cause of the decoherence, for example. And uh, the, but, but uh, the qubit is not in equilibrium. It is in a, in some external field and and so on. There are uh, we, we we as you said we have full control uh, for this qubit of this qubit. So uh, mm, I don't know. This is maybe. Mm, okay. Can I make a comment? Yes. So yeah, like. like Quantum computer, when operated in a regime when it's supposed to do quantum computation, is extremely out of equilibrium. It's supposed yeah. to be like epsilon away from a pure state. Okay, so yeah. so so I guess the, the, the questions about thermalizations are going to be interesting from like basic science point of view on the dynamics, asymptotic dynamics of quantum many body systems. But exactly. But yeah, like the yeah. threshold for quantum error of errors for quantum error correction is going to be first passed and then yeah. a, a much, 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 much longer. Okay, we will start. We'll start to approach Gibbs yes. state. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Let yeah. me let me explain this because yes, I I already mentioned about this quantum computers and and maybe it's not not clear that uh, yeah indeed uh, we are far away of equilibrium. And of course, this equilibrium never happened happened in, in, in the case of, of the quantum computer. But the question is, now I try to somehow uh, find the, the correct description of the open system. And the, the equilibrium is just the, the final state. So, so, so this is one uh, argument. Uh, how to to you know to to find the correct the the the, the correct evolution? So uh, it means that that uh, this is uh, this is what is uh, for sure that that this is uh, the thermal state final thermal state is is what we know from thermodynamics, and uh, of course in between there is uh, interesting evolution and interesting dynamics. So for a co quantum computer, the most essential part is, for example, the coherence, which is much shorter. Uh, and however, you should know which kind of open system description you should use. And this is the, the idea that uh, because we have different predictions uh, for different perspective from different de descriptions of open systems, now we can somehow find the best one and and this should be used for other purposes uh, okay uh, there are some it totally other... makes sense please i I, sh I shouldn't have asked this question no problem yes yeah, that, that's that's fine mm, so okay i go on so uh, yes so in, in, in this static picture, we just uh, trace out the buff. And now we assume that, that uh, the density matrix uh, is uh, once again some Gibbs state, but according to some effective Hamiltonian. And the name of this effective Hamiltonian is mean force Hamiltonian. The, the name comes from some old paper, the chemists uh, um, proposed this name. And uh, we uh, don't care about it, how, uh, what's the meaning of this name. But uh, the, the fact is that this is the effective Hamiltonian. Uh, so, so yes. And, and now we try to solve this kind of equation. We try to solve this, this effective Hamiltonian. So I should maybe repeat that uh, 
this age is the it's now the the whole Hamiltonian. So, for example, if th there is no interaction, of course, uh, this is after tracing out this is the age zero, because uh, this factorizes to two factor uh, this factorizes to two Gibbs states, and and then we trace out the the buff the reservoir and, and, and we have uh, a Gibbs uh, state in with respect to H0. But if this interaction is present, even if it's weak, then we have something else. And we have a perturbation of the of the Bell Hamiltonian. So, so this is our first correction and uh, we call it mean force correction. This is the of the second order correction. And uh, the first task is to solve this kind of equation. I should mention. Yeah. I think Lukas has a question. Do you? Yes. Yeah. Or no. So you're muted. Uh, yeah. I hope it's not going to be. The, the, so the, by the way, uh, you don't have to raise your yeah. uh, hands. You yeah. Know. I just I wanted yeah for the speaker to finish the sentence. Okay. So uh, is is there an easy answer to 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 to, to the question? So so what is wrong with, with textbook derivation of of, of canonical ensemble okay because where you know you simply get e2 minus beta h0 under some reasonable sounding reasonable sounding uh, you know uh, assumptions that the environment is, is is large and the coupling isn't overwhelmingly strong okay and in the end yeah. like Many many years ago, we, we we all got convinced that 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 like it, it should be e two minus beta h zero, uh, mm -hmm. unless I know I know I know uh, unless there's some like a, like a, like a, like a, okay maybe unless there's a situation when, when there's some like really mean field force exerted by the by the environment, but but okay oh yeah this is this well is I'm I'm close to to answering my own question. <laughs> this is the, the this is the idea, but uh, the the question is. What is H zero? Because uh, this is somehow in, in the uh, canonical ensemble description. Uh, this is somehow postulated that you know what is the Hamiltonian which describe your system, and 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 here is is rather idea that you start uh, when there is no interaction, and let's assume that that you can mm, ascribe some Hamiltonian to your isolated system. And then you turn on the interaction, and and this uh, somehow uh, renormalize your your initial Hamiltonian. It's like in the standard model, uh, the idea is very similar that that you have bare charge of the electron, but then you have this uh, vacuum polarization and so on, and you have the physical uh, charge of the electron. In fact, uh, uh, with this example, there are other problems because there are infinities, and but yeah. in fact here there are also infinities, and this is oh, yeah. this is very interesting also. And okay, we try so to solve it. Okay, so the simplest example is when when you have a, like a bare qubit splitting and you couple it to environment and you have transverse terms, you get Lamb shift, and then the exactly. question is. Are you going to actually have, you know, Boltzmann distribution according to original bare splitting, or the splitting renormalized by by lamp by lamp shifts and virtual excitations in the environment? Exactly, exactly. Okay. And and later I will introduce the lamp shift, and okay. and 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 the conclusion is that this mean force correction is not a lamp shift. So, but but wait a moment, and and I will okay. explain everything in detail. Yeah, thanks. Uh, okay, something more about this uh, topic. Maybe not. Uh, ah, yes, yes. Maybe, maybe one more thing uh, that our claim, and I think that this is very reasonable, that this indeed is a physical Hamiltonian. So, so this is, uh, for example, what I mean by physical Hamiltonian. This is the Hamiltonian which should be used to calculate some thermodynamic, uh, th thermodynamic quantities like free energy. And, and others, uh, uh, but free energy is, is for sure the most fundamental one. And uh, this is physical, it has to be physical because if, for example, you assume that the bare Hamiltonian is your physical Hamiltonian, then it looks like that you can just by thermalization, just by th thermalization, create some resource. 
Because if you assume that H0 is your physical Hamiltonian and you calculate free energy according to this H0, then this free energy is, has no, uh, uh, it's not minimum in the, uh, at the equilibrium. So, so, so you have some, some uh, finite uh, value of free energy and you can, for example, extract work from it. So because free energy is, is connected to, to, to work. So it's, it, it's, um, it looks like that it violates the, the second law of thermodynamics, that you can create a resource just by thermalization. And you will see later that, that it's funny because through this little interaction, we can in fact induce in our system coherences. And this is very interesting that, that this uh, perturbation can have of diagonal elements. And uh, later, if you calculate the density matrix, it predicts uh, coherences. So it means that if you, but in the bare Hamiltonian basis, so let's assume that bare Hamiltonian basis is, is a computational basis. So after thermalization, you have some coherences in the computational basis. And there is uh, now a lot of papers about it. And, but I don't think so that, that it is useful because it looks like, okay, we can create coherences by thermalization is great. But um, I think that it is not true because the physical Hamiltonian uh, should be taken uh, uh, is this. So uh, in this basis, you don't have coherences. So that's the matter which basis you choose. Okay, if there are any questions, so uh, if there are no questions, then I uh, go further. So now I, I just uh, want to say a few words about exact evolution. So now let's concentrate on, on the evolution because for a while it was a static picture and now we have an evolution and uh, we first start with an exact evolution. So uh, here we have just a unitary evolution. We assume that, uh, that now it is isolated system, but but our buff, uh, we assume that our buff is infinite. So it's, you know, there are some uh, mathematical problems with that, but, but let's assume that, that we can evolve, our, uh, we can describe the evolution by unitary. So uh, what I want to say uh, on, on this, uh, uh, the most important thing is that we use the interaction picture and uh, then we expand this unitary in the Dyson series. And, and the main uh, idea is uh, that uh, we can now segregate this expansion uh, uh, with orders of lambda. So that's why we use the interaction picture. And for a while, let's assume that, that uh, for a while, uh, we assume that initial state is not a product. It's just some arbitrary composite state. Uh, yes, oh, sorry, the, here should be S and R because without any index, I, uh, I mean this is system. So the observable and uh, especially density matrix without uh, any, any index is, is the um, uh, system, but here should be S and R that, that this is the composite state of, of system plus reservoir. Okay, so now we uh, want to derive master equation. Um, and a uh, few ideas how, how, we, uh, how we do this. And this is the first approach. At the end of this talk, I will introduce another approach. Uh, but, and, and, and the final conclusion is that this another approach is much better. But first uh, we should look at the master equation. Uh, so uh, we can uh, write this kind of evolution in terms of the differential equation, and this is the von Neumann equation. Uh, so, uh, so now the procedure is like this, that, that we can uh, propose a formal solution for this differential equation. Now you, you look that the, the generator is, is given by a commutator, but of the interaction Hamiltonian. Um, and uh, the formal solution is like this. You just take an integral uh, from both sides and it, it's not useful because uh, this, the, this solution uh, involves the, the uh, time dependence of the, 
of, of your state. So, so it's like a circular argument, but still it's a formal solution. Uh, and you put this solution into, uh, into the initial equation. And if you put this into the initial equation, uh, then you obtain this. Probably here should be also S and R, S and R and S and R here, but okay, sorry. There are some, some uh, little mistakes. Uh, okay, and then you, you have this one. Uh, so uh, still this is an exact uh, equation. This is uh, fully equivalent to, to, to the initial one, but now we apply some, some approximations. So uh, the first approximation is, uh, okay, I should mention that the first approximation is equating this term to zero. And uh, this is even not approximation, but somehow the assumption. And we can always do this. It's like uh, centralizations of, of, of some buff operators, but forget about it. We can do this. It's not a problem. And uh, it's not a, um, also, this is not an approximation. This is just- Sorry, kind of uh, sorry to bother you, but like, what does it mean we can like, uh, we can do it. So can we like, know, choose a basis or like in what sense it is possible like uh, to do it and okay. what's physical circumstances? Yeah, th 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 this means that, that you have in your in interaction, uh, later I have a form of this interaction Hamiltonian. So this interaction Hamiltonian uh, is consist uh, cons um, contains the uh, system operator interaction operator and the buff interaction operators. And now uh, this, the average of this, if, if this average, if the average of this buff operator is zero, then this term disappears. And uh, if it's non-zero, then you can rearrange your Hamiltonian in such a way that you add and subtract something and, and you have some un, Mm, uh, you, you can add just some, uh, you know, uh, operator uh, proportional to identity, and it's not a problem because it does not change the dynamics. Uh, so, so this is like sure, a mathematical sure, trick, which uh, the physics is equivalent. Uh, so, so we only concentrate on on, on this term. And now we apply Born approximation. It means that now this composite cis state, we can somehow factorize. And, and, and in, in this way that, that only our system is time dependent and the buff is always in equilibrium. So, so this is like an idea that the buff is so huge that I can approximate this composite state in each time by time dependent uh, density matrix of the system and independent uh, uh, density matrix of the buff, which is already the Gibbs state. Okay, Th this is just the historical uh, derivation of, uh, and, and then um, the Born approximation, but you can derive the same equation without this story. <laughs> so this is funny because, um, you can uh, rather, uh, so, so this is like a heuristic derivation, but you can derive the same thing uh, from this exact uh, evolution, just uh, considering the projector uh, on your system. So, so you just consider some subspace in your Hilbert space. Uh, this projector is defined in this way. And then you consider the dynamics of, of this subspace. And uh, you can obtain this kind of equation, uh, the master equation like this. And uh, finally, you, uh, mm, you have to expand it uh, in, in lambda. And if you expand it up to the second order, then you obtain this. So in fact, Born approximation is not about the uh, big buff and a small system, and that you can assume that this buff is time independent, but the Born approximation is, is rather about weak coupling. So it's, it's only about uh, uh, expansion of, of, of this generator up to the second order. And you 
uh, obtain it without this whole story about the Born approximation. So it's nice to, to know about it, that, that this is just a rather historical derivation, but uh, now it's, it's rather, um, it, it's more obvious and, and, uh, and better to, to, to think about Born approximation as just the expansion up to the second order. And then we apply, after that, we apply the Markov approximation. And, and Markov approximation is based on the idea that, that I change this S variable to T variable. So it means, and, and now it's a huge approximation, in fact, because now it means that, that this whole generator, so, so this whole generator gives us the derivative of, of your current state. So let's assume that we are in time t, the, the derivative in the current state uh, is given by this uh, generator. And this generator involves the whole history of your system from zero to t, because you have to integrate this whole thing. And uh, here, rho changes from zero to t. So it somehow involves the whole history. But now we, we assume that, that this generator can be replaced by, by this one. And it involves only the, the final state. So it forgets about the whole history, but, but uh, finally we, we put uh, only here rho of t. So this is the Markov approximation. Mm. And um, yes, and this is our initial equation. So, so this is the microscopic derivation of the, of the master equation. And uh, now we can uh, transform. So, so now I, I, I just consider this uh, right-hand side, and and this is written as a generator of the uh, of my uh, master equation. And now, if, when I if I assume that my interaction has such a form, and this is general form, uh, we need to only assume that A and R are Hermitian operators, but this is gen general form of any interaction Hamiltonian. Uh, you just uh, represent it as sum of, of, uh, of, of products, uh, yes, sum of products. And, uh, and, then, and, and now you can take this one and, and, and derive uh, such a generator. So now uh, this is after trans tracing out the buff. So, so now the, the whole uh, information about the, about the buff is inside this K and inside this Hamilton. So this, I call this dynamical correction because I try to, to, be, to, be, to be more general to be most general, but, but uh, for the common uh, Davis equation, for example, this is called lamp shift. So, so we already talked about it. So, so this is another correction. And uh, I call it dynamical correction just, but, but conventionally it is called lamp shift correction. Mm. So, uh, okay, here there are also some, some intermediate steps that we make a Fourier transform of those quantities, but it is irrelevant for our discussion. This is very important, this dynamical correction. So how we should interpret it? It's, it's like mm, we have now, uh, the interpretation is like this, that now we, we think that this is something new and we call it dissipator. So now this is, because normally if we have an isolated uh, system, then its evolution is given by a commutator uh, with some Hamiltonian. So now we can uh, think about this term as the evolution of the isolated system, but its Hamiltonian is now renormalized. So, so now we, we have to change our Hamiltonian, and this is the contribution from the buff. So it looks like that the that buff has have some, uh, somehow renormalized our Hamiltonian and our free uh, isolated dynamics. But now, but, but also we have this additional term which we call dissipator, and this is purely this, this irreversible dynamics. It, uh, it, it leads to, 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 to this irreversible. Uh, process. 
Um, okay, so this is another another correction and another kind of the renormalization. And and later, as I said, we uh, will compare those different uh, corrections. Uh, so now I should also mention about uh, the the very famous uh, theorem. Uh, such that uh, if this K is a positive semi-definite matrix, matrix, uh, then so, so so then we uh, we can diagonalize it, and uh, eigenvalues are uh, positive uh, or zero, and then uh, the theorem says that now our dynamics is completely positive. So this is a very interesting thing because we indeed have this microscopic derivation. Uh, and now uh, we have a theorem that if K is, is positive matrix, then uh, the whole dynamics is uh, completely positive. However, yeah. C can I make a comment? Yes. Okay. Sorry, d d don't, don't, don't take it badly, but, but okay, you're calling it microscopic derivation, but okay, as you, as you yourself stressed, okay, you made a you know, bone approximation, which is reasonable for weak coupling and Markov approximation, which is basically used in order to, for the whole thing to, you know, be a simple equation and for the maths to be easier. Yes, yes, exactly. So, so basically, if you don't discuss, you know, physical reasons or microscopic reasons for Markov approximations being, you know, expected to be very correct or not, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't stress so much that it's that it's that it's microscopically based. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh... Like micros microscopically justifying justifying the Markov approximation might be tricky for any specific system, or and for many of them, it, it's it can never be justified. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. Later, uh, the second approach uh, does not involve the Markov approximation, and the, the, and we will see that that in fact mm, we can derive a very similar generator, or uh, not even even the same one. But but let me uh, yes. So so yeah, of course. At that moment, it's, it's just a microscopic derivation with those assumptions. And what is the, the physical meaning of, the, of those assumptions is, is another story. Yeah, that, that's true, of course. But look, and, and indeed, there is something wrong with this uh, derivation. Because if we, if we take just this uh, equation, so after Born and Markov approximation, and if we compute uh, uh, this quantities, Ks, so, so for this case, uh, K um, is given by, by those functions. Those functions are related to, uh, to uh, autocorrelation function of the BAP. Uh, it's not important, uh, but, but the, the, uh, the important thing is that uh, this matrix is not positive. So, so through, so in fact, this microscopic derivation, uh, so with Born and Markov approximation, does not lead to completely positive dynamics, and um, this is the 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 main problem of of, of this derivation. And later, we uh, so the most famous equation is Davis equation, and. This equation involves another approximation, and this is the secular approximation, which uh, somehow uh, change this uh, matrix only to diagonal one. So, so it's like a dephasing. So, so we we just forget about of diagonal terms. We equate them to zero, and then uh, this diagonal part is indeed positive. So, so then we obtain this completely positive dynamics, and this is the Davis equation. And uh, it's at some point it is reasonable because. Mm, sorry, sorry, can I can I make can I make another 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 comment? Yes, <laughs> because. It, it, like two slides ago, you, you stressed that, that you are not assuming that the initial state of system and the buff is 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 is, is uncorrelated. Okay, you yes. took a general row, but if yes. you take a general row, there's no guarantee that the re reduced dynamics of the system will be a, a CP map, isn't it? True. Uh, uh, 
in the born approximation it is reasonable okay okay yeah so then so, so then so basically the born the, approximation the, these approximations be like like yeah like br bring you down to this but then yes but okay yes. yeah i just wanted to yeah, mm -hmm. make sure about exactly this. <laughs> now now there are uh, some some uh, new research new papers about uh, to forget about this born approximation and to forget about the the the, the this product form so so there are some and and they yes but we don't have a time to to, to discuss it so so uh, i just want to mention that that the most popular equation is davis equation and it involves in fact born markov and secular approximation to, in order to to have the uh, equation which is completely positive Okay, so uh, the next, uh, the, the, the third. Can I have just a general question? Yes. Like, okay, about ex experiments. <laughs> okay, I mean, uh, just okay, given that we have this like informal atmosphere. So, the, like, there is a plethora of assumptions involved in derivation of uh, open system dynamics on different levels. So, were those Okay, either assumptions or were the, were they actually tested in some like in a kind of precise sense in some uh, well controlled uh, environment? Those yes, things? yes, yes. There are there are a lot of uh, okay. um, experiments uh, in quantum optics. I think uh, I am also not an expert, but but in quantum optics, I think that Davis equation. Uh, it's 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 a, a very good approximation, and and you you can. Mm, yeah, it, it very well uh, described the dynamics. Uh, so this is the, the, the thing. Uh, there are also uh, comparisons uh, with uh, an exact solution uh, uh, for such an open system. So, so if your buff is, uh, mm, uh, if your model is based on harmonic oscillator, so, so the, you, you have a buff uh, consisted of uh, harmonic oscillators, then it is, it is relatively, uh, mm, relatively um, not. So it's, it's efficient to solve it. Like, yes, yes. Systems. It's, yes, it's a relatively simple uh, problem to solve numerically. And then uh, this exact solution simulation is compared with the, with the uh, dynamics. Uh, with respect to the master equation, and there are regimes of uh, of good correspondence and regimes which are not good. So this should be also, uh, you know, uh, taken into account that that some kind of uh, equations are are good, for example, in short times. Some time, uh, some of them are good in intermediate times, and some is are good to to describe the the final thermal state, for example. Thanks. So yes, okay. And finally, I I, I introduce the 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 third correction, and this is in fact uh, the steady state correction. So so we can come back to the initial picture. And now we assume, uh, okay, this born approximation is, is okay because uh, no, no, the born approximation is okay, but the product form is okay, at least in the weak coupling, because uh, we can assume that our system is, is uh, uh, not correlated with the buff. And then, uh, and, and now we consider our dynamics and uh, we take a limit when times go to infinity. So now we look uh, what our master equation predicts in the long time limit. So, so we take a limit of this generator and, and then we solve the, the solution for a stationary state. Uh, yes, uh, and very often uh, if it's generic uh, buff, this is the only uh, one uh, stationary state. So, so you are sure that, that in the long time limit, uh, your system thermalizes to the solution of, of this equation. So, uh, and now once again, very similar uh, to, to, to the mean force derivation. Now we also postulate the stationary state as a Gibbs state. And once again, we, we uh, 
uh, we introduce a perturbation of, of this per Hamiltonian. So now we call it a stationary state correction. So uh, we have mean force, we have dynamical correction and stationary correction. Uh, so all of them are the perturbation of the Bear Hamiltonian in the second order of uh, lambda. Uh, yes, and we solve this equation using the um, perturbative uh, calculus. Uh, so we expand this generator uh, in orders of lambda, and we expand this uh, postulated stationary state in orders of lambda. And then we obtain a set of equations in each order of lambda. And uh, the most interesting thing here is finally from, from these equations, we want to calculate the, the uh, second order correction to, to, to this Hamiltonian. So this HST2. Uh, so this is the second order correction. And, uh, and we can calculate the off diagonal uh, part of, of this Hamiltonian uh, solving the second order equation, but to calculate the diagonal part, you need to go to the fourth order. So it's, it's a little bit annoying <laughs> because uh, fourth order is very complicated, and, uh, but the second order equation uh, does not give you any, any constraint on, on the diagonal part. This is just from pure mathematical, uh, pure mathematical uh, thing. So, so we, we can't do anything with that uh, in this, uh, uh, because we use this perturbative method. So maybe someone can propose another method and maybe, uh, uh, yeah, but, but I think that this is something physical because it involves this, this fourth order generator. So, so in fact, uh, it is always, uh, in, um, crucial to, to involve this fourth order generator. So here you see that, for example, this is the general situation. And, and we have uh, here uh, what I already mentioned, uh, that, that you have fourth order generator, which is not present in this derivation, because we cut off everything up to the second order. So, so here we have only the generator. This is this dissipator uh, in the second order. So it already uh, somehow shows that, that probably this diagonal part will be wrong because you do not involve this, this uh, higher order generator. Okay, and now I can present the first results. Uh, and uh, these are just, you know, complicated equations, but I just show you that we derive them. But uh, and, and we used uh, uh, our methodology is based on, on, on this representation that we all of these corrections represent uh, according to these operators. We call these operators jump operators, and they appear in this master equation. It, they form a basis, so, so we can always uh, do this. Uh, and okay, I have some. some so, so first, we we derive the the mean force correction. So so this is an exact solution, this second order uh, correction. And uh, just uh, you see, with this representation, we need to just calculate uh, those coefficients. And this is fully general. So so that's why uh, it's uh, important result because this mean force of of course was known for some particular cases. But but this is a, a full general derivation. So. Uh, the, uh, and you, you see that that mean force is a static picture, so it does not involve any kind of master equation. It is just a, a, just a proper equilibrium state. If you assume that your whole thing, uh, you, the buff and the system are in equilibrium, then, then if you trace uh, out the buff, then, then you have mean force. Uh, general solution for that. And we also have this solution for this off diagonal term. So we solve generally uh, this uh, second uh, order equation. And this is the, the, the solution. So if those coefficients are like that, then, then it forms the, the solution for this second order equation. And now, what is important that if you take uh, because now it's for it, 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 this stationary solution is for arbitrary 
master equation, maybe not arbitrary master equation, but arbitrary uh, coefficient k. So, so you can imagine that you have this very general, uh, you, you, you have a family of master equations and you can take different k's. So for example, you can take uh, k like this and you have block Redfield equation and you can take uh, like this and you have Davis equation. I just want to um, highlight that that uh, block red field indeed comes from this microscopic derivation under those assumptions. So for a block red field, this is indeed uh, the, um, the mean form. So it's okay. Uh, so it's it's good uh, for, 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 for this kind uh, of- Sorry, what is long range here? Sorry, I got a bit lost. Uh, long range. Limit or what? But, but you said you were using this. Okay, I got. Uh, long, long time, time limit. limit or... Yes, yes, long time limit. It's it's. Uh, okay. We, we just calculate the stationary state in the long time limit. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So just we are harassing you with questions. So we have still like it's already well. Okay, like uh, quarter past four. But let's say, can you try to make it in? 15 minutes. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's that, that's great. Uh, cool. Good. So uh, yes, so so here we see that that indeed block redfield equation predicts correct coherences in your in the final uh, stationary state in the final this, mm, yes stationary state which is at equilibrium. So block redfield predicts it, it, it uh, the block redfield prediction is good because this is the mean force. But the, if you apply secular approximation, then uh, this is a uh, lamp shift, in fact, this dynamical correction. And uh, even uh, in the Davis equation, uh, the secular approximation is also applied for this dynamical correction and this is zero for, for, the, for the Davis. So Davis does not uh, predict any coherences. And, uh, and the main message is that secular approximation is in this case wrong because it does not predict the proper uh, uh, steady state coherences. So, so they, the, the secular approximation, if applied, uh, predicts uh, something else. Mm, so you see that there is a trade-off here now because block red field is not completely positive, but it predicts uh, uh, good uh, uh, steady state coherences at equilibrium, but secular approximation is completely positive, but it predicts uh, the, the stationary state is not a, a proper equilibrium state. These are coherence and age in basis of eigenstates of age zero. Yes, these are coherences in again. Okay, in, so in the, I would say yes. so, so. So the presence of them actually is related to the fact that that interaction with the basis actually renormalized re the the <laughs> what should actually be the basis of of, of yes. your system or qubit eigenstates. <laughs> Yes, yes, exactly. Or like rotated it a bit. Hmm? Yeah, so yeah, that, exactly, that. exactly. But but uh, uh, if if you assume that uh, that uh, mm, uh, mean force is your physical Hamiltonian, then then finally you, you, you don't have these coherences because, uh, for example, Brocklet uh, Redfield predicts as uh, uh, as mean force such that it does not produce any resource finally because this should be our physical Hamiltonian. This is our interpretation of, of, of this uh, fact. Uh, good, so now I want to quickly introduce uh, this another approach, and this is a cumulant approach. And the, the final conclusion is that cumulant is, is, is better in any case. So, so it's uh, first. Cumulant does not involve Markov approximation. So, so uh, the idea about cumulant is not to, uh, to solve the von Neumann equation. So, so not the starting point is not a differential equation, but this, this map, this dynamical map. 
So uh, we already assume here that, that, that we, we have a product state at the beginning, and this is consistent with the Born approximation. So later uh, we indeed assume Born approximation because we only consider terms up to the second order. But the whole idea about the uh, cumulant is that we propose such a map. So, so now we want to describe this, this whole evolution as some dynamical map. And this dynamical map is represented by uh, the exponential map. And we have some generator of this exponential map. And now we expand this generator in, in orders of lambda. So this is the idea. It was first proposed by Robert Alitsky long time ago. In fact, this is the year of my birth. <laughs> so <laughs> indeed, long time ago. But uh, later, it, it, it was also uh, rediscovered. And, and sometimes it is called uh, refined weak coupling. So now the, the, the cumulant equation is just this, because um, as I said, we, we use Born approximation. So, so, so we only consider uh, the leading term. And this is the lambda square term. And now we can write the, the whole evolution like this. And, uh, and now you can expand the left-hand side, the right-hand side, and then you can compare terms uh, with the same, uh, of the same order of lambda, and then you can find the, the solution for K. So uh, now we see that, that it is uh, similar to the, to the uh, generator of the master equation. The only difference is now that there is a time, uh, that there is an integral. And now what is very important is that uh, now uh, this generator has this GKSL form. So it means that this evolution is completely positive. So this is the second uh, very important feature of the cumulant equation, that, that we have completely positive dynamics. So uh, as you see, for a while, it's, it's, it's a very good approach because we doesn't involve Markov approximation and still we have completely positive uh, dynamics. Uh, so now, and, and now interesting thing is, uh, so our starting point was uh, the uh, um, dynamical uh, map, but now we can, inter, uh, we can uh, take a derivative of, of this equation of this one and, and uh, derive the master equation for this kind of evolution. So uh, you can take a derivative of, of this exponent. This is some general formula for this. Mm, and, and finally, you can write the, the master equation of, of the cumulant uh, equation uh, of the cumulant approach. And you can expand this, this generator and you see that it, it has very nice form. It's like, it's very similar to Baker Campbell Hauser formula. You have just just nested commutators, and they involve only a generator k and and the derivative of the of the generator of, of k. And now our very important uh, result is that the derivative of k is indeed Bloch Redfield generator. So uh, so so somehow it it shows that. That, block, uh, that the Redfield equation is, is, uh, mm, is really a good uh, equation because mm, without even Markov approximation, we see that, that the leading order is indeed the, the block Redfield. So uh, in this sense, block Redfield equation and this microscopic derivation here is correct because it predicts a correct uh, leading order of, uh, of the generator. But uh, the, the interesting thing is that now in, uh, for a cumulant, we have also higher order generator. Uh, so this is something additional. And now uh, we do, okay, I just, I, I, I will skip. I see. Yes. Really? Yes, I will skip this and, and, and only show you the, the, the final uh, thing because now we see that cumulant is, has the same generator as, as, uh, as uh, Redfield. So it predicts correct uh, coherences, but now we can also solve this fourth order uh, um, uh, equation and, and calculate the diagonal terms. And diagonal terms uh, are very close. So this, 
the orange one is is uh, cumulant and this dotted line is its uh, mean force so cumulant because it has this higher order generators also predicts uh, the mm, the diagonal terms very well it's not exact because we have also this k4 which we neglected so it's not exact but it is very well okay so finally summary so um, it's very quick so so i just want to say that cumulant is it's much better than than any other description of open system because it's completely positive this is the first uh, second it does not involve Mark markov approximation so it's more physical uh, next week uh, it predicts exact uh, coherences at equilibrium and it predicts uh, diagonal part at least for a two-dimensional system very close to equilibrium so uh, that's why i think that cumulant equation is very very good and and great for uh, description of of open systems and what we can do more is to involve this k4 and probably then the diagonal part is also exact and uh, what is interesting for me uh, and now i want to concentrate on this to to apply this whole machinery for non-equilibrium situation when we have currents and and different uh, buffs in different temperatures so we can calculate engines and so on so as always uh, thank you for your attention and paper is will be very soon on archive probably at the end of this week so if you want to uh, read it so so it's it will be available very soon so um, once again thank you thanks martin for, for a nice talk so i know what michael is working on so intensely now yes <laughs> yes <laughs> this wednesday or Saturday, till today or tomorrow anyway okay yeah, we have exactly time exactly for questions and comments to to the speaker Uh, yeah, so if I may ask a question. Go ahead, yeah. uh, so you said that you kind of predict this creation of coherences in the steady state, but somehow yeah. its interpretation it's it's not clear. So what about if you take two systems and, and kind of uh, equilibrate them? Would you expect to have entanglement between them or Oh yeah, this is interesting. Interesting. I, I, probably it's not possible, but but I am um uh, this is uh, yeah I, I this is my guess but but i i, I for, for sure this is possible if you have non equilibrium situation that that uh, this is a lot of uh, a lot of papers about it that that when you have uh, two different temperatures and uh, so su such that they can induce uh, and they can create entanglement but with a single buff, uh, I don't know. Especially, uh, especially, uh, we don't even think about creation of entanglement by single buff, but but in equilibrium, in fact. Uh, can I ask for but, a confirmation? Did, did you mean non-interacting to non-interacting systems? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, okay. yes, because yeah. otherwise, it's like yeah, yeah, yes, 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 of course. Yeah, but here uh, I, I maybe I, I was not so clear. But but here uh, the 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 coherences are not a problem because the problem is what you what you uh, assume is your physical Hamiltonian. If yeah, yeah, you assume that I your know, physical Hamiltonian is mean force, then then you don't have any coherences in in, in yeah, this yeah, sense. But, but my point is that like entanglement is basis independent, so then you get rid of. Ah, yes, problems. yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. So what, that's why I I have no idea. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, so a uh, mathematical question, maybe okay uh, about maybe both approaches, but especially this. Uh, Cumulant expansion. Sorry. Yes. Uh, so you you limit yourself to the second. Okay, to the uh, first like non-trivial non term here, right? Yes. This, uh, and like, is there any like? Do you have a control on like what are the errors that you make, or is it? Uh, or like, have you tested it maybe on some 
exactly solvable cases to see how well this approach works and what are the limitations basically yeah. yes yes um, so uh, we expect that that cumulant uh, is 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 much better in in some intermediate situations so because uh, other approaches if if we think about the the evolution because here it's another topic because we just think about the the, the final thermal state but but if we think about evolution, then, then we, we expect that cumulant is, is better in some intermediate case. So, so good limits when, when coupling is, is, is very weak. And if coupling is very strong, then we, then we have a good uh, 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 limits. And, and uh, master equations uh, works very well in, in, in those limits. But, but in the intermediate limit, there are some problems. But here there is also another story because uh, everything here depends on, 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 on cutoffs. So, so it's like in this standard model, which I mentioned uh, at the beginning, that, that in fact, if we want to calculate everything as, uh, as our equation says, we have infinities. So, uh, and this should be first uh, somehow resolved because sometimes your cutoff, because finally you, you do not integrate up to infinity, you integrate over some range of frequencies, but uh, finally you, you do not integrate up to infinity, but up, up to some, some, uh, some finite, uh, but um, very big frequency. And sometimes this cutoff is, is physical, uh, like in solid state and uh, for example but 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 in quantum optics it's it's non physical and and you have some infinities and this mm, uh, what i want to say finally is is that your evolution depends on this cutoff so it's hard to compare uh, where you make a mistake is is your mistake uh, because you have a wrong equality or you have some problems with cutoffs so this is what I want to mention, that, that we also uh, try to somehow resolve this problem of cutoff. And uh, yeah, so, so, so our basic idea is, is, is to do something very similar to, to standard model, such that we should start with H0, which is infinite. So, so, so we, we should think that, that the bare Hamiltonian of the system should be, should be infinite, and then this renormalization should how somehow uh, you know we subtract infinity uh, with infinity and and we obtain some finite value and then we don't have cutoffs but this is very uh, nice idea but but we don't know what to do with it okay one general a naive question so at some point i mean on high level related to what you were saying so i guess like in the in your talk you you sort of implicitly assume like infinite buff and maybe some structure of the i don't know uh energy density of the buff right because you i mean there are those full your like those frequencies like uh, until some point there were like uh uh there were no frequencies and then <laughs> there were those sums and omega omega primes and so on so yes like mm -hmm. but like is there like like uh, is there some assumption that you need to take uh, take about the buff for this to work? That's one question. And the other question, like about this cum cumulant again. So again, like uh, there are some works that that started this equilibration for let's say spin systems or things like this. So like, would it be possible to to apply? Uh, just directly this model without uh, this approach without invoking frequencies and so on just to spin systems directly uh, yes um, yeah maybe the first question is um, for example uh, if your buff is 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 a lattice in in uh, in solid state then uh, then you have some uh, and, and then um, excitations uh, in buffs are uh, 
some uh, sound waves, for example, phonons. We describe it as quasi-particles phonons. And, um, and then you, you have some, some fundamental frequency. It's given by, uh, by uh, the length between atoms. That, that you, you have some, some uh, final, uh, some, some, you know, the, the physical cutoff. And it, it, it is just uh, comes from that structure, as you said, uh, of, of your bath. Uh, but in, in yes, so so that's uh, in in this case your cutoff is physical, and 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 there is no problem to to introduce such a cutoff. But for such a cutoff, you have a continuum of uh, of modes uh, of electromagnetic field, and 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 this is the fundamental model of, of quantum optics. So whenever you you uh, consider a cavity and an atom uh, and yes very often uh, uh, so 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 at some point you artificially assume that that there are some frequencies which do not contribute to this dynamics but there is no physical reason why you should uh, uh, just uh, assume something like that uh, so, so this this is the problem with cutoffs. We know that 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 those higher uh, high frequencies do not contribute much, but if you integrate over whole range of those frequencies up to infinity, then you have uh, divergence. And and um, I think that I don't have any smart answer to your question about spins. So so maybe. Um, Okay, I okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I could, if I could make a comment, actually, or like another answer to, to your first question, since I, I guess I'm, I'm in this crowd, I'm the person who got my hands the more dirty for the, for the longest time with, with, with some, with real systems. So these frequency dependent things were generally Fourier transforms of correlation functions of, of, of some buffer environmental operators, so spectral densities. Yes. So, so if, for example, you have one of them has a divergence at some, at some frequency, okay? Hmm. Uh, for example, you have really a lot of modes because I don't know, it's your environment are photons and you're in a cavity, okay? And there's yes. some resonant mode with broadening around it, okay? Hmm. Then if you, and, and then if you're trying to describe energy relaxation, so there's also a resonance energy associated with, you know, getting the energy out of your qubit, okay? Out of your system and exchanging, exchanging it, it with the environment then hitting with this resonant energy into to hit, hitting with this resonant energy the energy where that spectral density diverges yep. is a bad thing to do like if if you do it you should then carefully double check if you can still you know use born markov or like, and like all the other approximations that you that you had before like yep. it, it's not completely clear from this way from, from this derivation path but but if, if there are some singular things later in frequency you should then go back and, and make sure that that that, that, the, that the that the whole setup doesn't doesn't fall apart so, yes. so that's I, I guess so i think that the classical experimental system open yes. system is like you know an atom in a in a in a cavity so so and the photons are leaking out of the cavity and if your atom is, is in resonance with the cavity you, you should be careful about like treating spontaneous emission you know of this of the of this two level of, of this atom in born mark of approximation okay yes yes that's true but but i think that it is uh, related to something else uh, yeah yeah but it's 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 very uh, close related but but these are other types of, of infinities because mm. uh, we yeah, also, yeah that's yeah that, that was not about you know cut yeah we, we have yeah. some uh, for for example in in those functions as as you said we, we have this kind of functions and and later um, some uh, um, yeah for, for example this combination and 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 later we have some poles that that when Omega is, is very close to omega zero, for example, and omega zero is this resonant frequency, then we have a pole, we have infinity. 
and and of course yeah th this is also the case and uh, but uh, with those kind of infinities we somehow uh, we can regularize those frequencies there are some some mathematical tricks to do this at least in in, in my approach maybe in other uh, physical system it, it's not possible but uh, this this we also uh, mentioned here that that normally uh, yeah okay but but maybe we sh shouldn't go uh, too deep but uh, yes we have those poles but but it is another another kind of infinities uh, appearing in this framework but uh, this infinities uh, which i mentioned before this comes from integration uh, up to infinity of 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 uh, of all frequencies. So, for example, finally we have some some quantity which is, uh, in fact, all of those quantities. So, so it's it's a funny thing because all of those things. If I want to calculate this this uh, correction, lamp shift, uh, dynamical, or uh, or mean force, if I want to calculate it. And if I, and, and here you have this 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 uh, 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 integral over all frequencies. So if you integrate it over all frequencies, it gives you infinity. <laughs> and this is the this is the problem. So 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 finally everybody just introduce cutoff so, so such that you can introduce some some additional exponential functions such that it somehow uh, dumps those. Uh, high frequencies. And I understand that you guys are trying to just understand it kind of beyond such like naive approach. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> just... yes. Yes, yes, because uh, if those frequencies are, if those cutoffs are physical, then, then we are okay. There is no problem. But in the fundamental model of quantum optics, you don't have such a cutoff. And if you want to calculate everything so, so if you're in this case, you have a system atom and and ca in a cavity, and it interacts with electromagnetic field. So, if you calculate everything as your physics says, then you have infinities. And exactly the same thing was in the, the same problem was with standard model. Yes, we, we that's why Feynman and others obtain the Nobel Prize, that they somehow solved this problem. I mean, that wasn't yet a standard model, but QED, uh, QED, yes, QED. Still, mm -hmm. yeah. yes, yeah. yes, of course. Okay, thanks, Marcin. Okay, last chance to ask something to the speaker. If not, let's thank Marcin again. Thanks, uh, sure, thanks, Marcin. Marcin. Thank you, everybody. Uh, let's thank you to all. See you soon uh, in person. Thanks for joining mm -hmm. us today, Marcin. Yeah, thank you very much.